Hi! Helldivers 2 just came out, and as a longtime fan of the first game, and one who continues to shoot bugs with guns in another, I was super excited. I'm happy to announce I haven't yet been much disappointed with the second, and I'd like to go over my thoughts while this extremely messy Difficulty 9 bug nest solo plays in the background. First impressions. Lots of bugs, but not in the good way. It's a shame that every game that releases nowadays is filled with raw coding errors, and Helldivers is no different. I've spent probably half an hour during day one troubleshooting a friend's audio issue, and there are many systems in-game that just break on occasion. Generally, it's nothing experience running, but some bugs, like one where the extraction just disappeared from one player, can be frustrating. Matchmaking has been breaking on and off, but it's generally possible to find a squad. The nice thing is, over the course of the next couple of weeks or months, most of these should be smoothed out. Bad code is temporary, but a good game is forever. My second impression of Helldivers 2 was that they did a really good job of porting over the first game, which I loved, into three dimensions. It really feels meaningful. They've incorporated vertical mobility, more complex bug weak points, meaningful feeling size differences, all without losing the quintessential Helldivers feel. It still feels, in a lot of ways, like the game I loved, but rethought and revamped, which feels really good as a fan. They've taken the opportunity to flesh out that third dimension, and all the power that comes to the player because of it. One such opportunity they've taken is making cyborgs proper ranged enemies. Unlike the first game, where every fraction was really just melee or pseudo-melee outside of tanks, in this game, there's a huge range of possibilities, to the point where fighting Borgs genuinely feels like a completely different game. There's enormous space for creativity here, and Arrowhead has really leveraged it. It's awesome, and I can't wait to see what they'll do with the other factions that seem to be coming, given how much empty space there is in the missions board. Combat feels quite good, though there is some choppiness with weapon switching and reloads. Weapons are generally medium satisfying, even if they often aren't the most effective, due to how heavily armored enemies are. Aiming with the quote-unquote realistic aiming system feels better than I would have expected, honestly, in a third-person shooter. Just make sure to turn off mouse acceleration, which is on by default. Movement is generally fine, if sometimes somewhat stilted, especially when you get knocked down by the game's seemingly quite complex physics engine. Stratagems are basically the same as they used to be, functionally. They're a set of four quote-unquote ability slots that let you call in airstrikes, heavy weaponry, and more. Stratagem kills are as satisfying as ever, especially with the addition of a kill count at the bottom of the screen, which is a great touch. I wish stratagem kills were counted in the end screen, but it is what it is. Friendly Fire is still here, and it's still funny, but it's noticeably more avoidable than in the first game. Now, let's move on to meta progression and build making. It's nice that, unlike the first game, resupply stratagems don't take up an entire stratagem slot anymore. It's not so nice that the entire team shares a single resupply stratagem cooldown, making it easier for teammates to thwart your mission. And unlike in the first game, you can't double up on stratagems. This might be because many of the best loadouts in Helldivers 1 just stacked up on the best stratagems, but it still feels somewhat limiting. There are two weapon slots now, a primary and a sidearm, which I would say allows for better build variety, but honestly speaking, the sidearms are still not great weapons. They're pretty terrible, and honestly have been kind of relegated to a proper sidearm role. The perk slot's been replaced with team-wide boosters, which seem much lower in individual power compared to the first game's perks but affect the whole team. This does in limit individual build choices, though, which makes me miss the variation between the stratagem spamming strat priority builds that didn't even bring resupplies in the first game, versus the double equipment cardio accelerator builds. Even more limiting, though, is the way they've handled progression in this game. Gone are the plethora of equipment upgrades from Helldivers 1. Instead, now, there are seemingly no weapon upgrades whatsoever, and stratagems are only affected by relatively uninteresting numerical buffs that apply to all stratagems of a specific type, called ship upgrades in this game. Because of the lack of individual stratagem upgrades, some strats are destined to get power crept out of usability in the later difficulties, given now there's no option to give that Vindicator an anti-tank upgrade, just anti-tank or no anti-tank. 
Same goes with weapon upgrades, for that matter. The battle pass system is fine, but I could see it being a big annoyance for more casual players, given how much it rewards moving up in difficulty, since you get way more medals on the higher difficulties. People were concerned about the premium battle pass, but by day 3 I have a friend who's almost unlocked it just by playing the game normally. It's whatever. I don't really see why they felt the need to opt for this sort of system rather than, you know, anything else, but it's not experience running for now. The map system is back. Not sure if races will still be able to be fully cleared like in the first game, given we haven't done it yet, but that's a feature I hope doesn't come back. In the first game, you could be locked out of more than half the game's content for weeks at a time, given races became unplayable once you finished beating them back in the galactic map. One major complaint I have, though, is the new effects system. Every day, every single mission in a galactic sector gets applied with something that makes the mission a bit more challenging. Some of them are really, really brutal, like today's, which doubles stratagem call times on almost every bug planet. You can't disable this, as far as I can tell, which is really damn annoying. Sometimes I just want to play the normal game. I think the effect system should be much more limited than it is currently, aside from environmental planet-wide effects like heat or cold. All mission objectives have been streamlined. Each mission is one specific objective now, rather than the randomized mishmash of primary objectives you'd get in the first game. This makes the experience much more streamlined and much more intentional feeling, which is great. Also, if you complete your mission now but fail to extract, you still win the mission. This is amazing, not only because it's very thematically appropriate for the disposable soldier tone of the game, but also because it makes losses sting a lot less. In exchange, you have to extract to retrieve the samples you picked up during the missions, which is vital for those stratagem upgrades I talked about earlier. Overall, mission flow and the reward system is great and much better than the first game. That's most of the things I think most people will care about. If you're on the fence, I'd say buy the game. It's been a blast so far and is really true to the classic Hellbivers experience. The game is still thematically and aesthetically amazing. There's lots of fun to be had, especially with friends. Now let's move on to the tryhard shit. I have some concerns. Revives in this game are now limited, but in exchange, even if the whole crew dies, reinforced stratagems will still be called. It's no longer just a solo thing. This reduces tension in a lot of places, but also caps how hard they could reasonably make the game compared to the first one. And I have to say, difficulty 9 is pretty easy in the grand scheme of things, but in my opinion, for a lot of the wrong reasons. Me putting out a solo first try on day 3 is a little concerning, even if there is a ton of space for me to improve. Player killing power, partially due to the lack of stratagem upgrades, is not great. At high difficulties, as you might be able to see in the background, the game spams tons of enemies which take stratagems, often multiple of them, with cooldowns often measured in multiple minutes. This makes it often quite optimal to just run around the map before going killing most of the larger enemies, just waiting for them to de-aggro on top of difficulties. Actually, full clearing, on the other hand, is much more difficult, and probably sometimes even impossible, given how much more punishment some enemies can take, and given the fact that most enemies can now call in more waves, compounding the bugs in the area the longer you take to kill them. And on top of that, the game is honestly pretty easy if you don't try to kill every bug, given how augmented diver mobility is in this game. Drastically reducing player killing power and bumping the mobility to the roof is not exactly conducive to satisfying bug killing gameplay. I'm not super worried about this though, given Arrowhead has a track record of releasing more brutal difficulties and balance is a more solvable problem than the fundamental feel of combat, which is quite good in its current state. Just please don't release the Rumbler again. I hope the game can be harder pretty soon, but for now, it's nice that the minimum level of skill to clear a difficulty 9 mission and the skill ceiling of the game are miles apart. Miles which I'm personally looking forward to walking. Happy diving out there. And hey, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, all the algorithm things. It helps me out. I'll let this Battle Titan fight play out, but there's the full solo in the description if you're interested.